Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to go over a product that is technically a medical product, which is available everywhere on social media. I've seen these advertisements everywhere. And I knew that based on its size and based on its appearance, I knew kind of what it was going to be on the inside. Now, this is an ultrasonic tooth cleaner, which all the advertisements sell it as the equivalent of an ultrasonic prophylaxis. Obviously, this is not going to be an ultrasonic prophylaxis. For one thing, there's no harmonic generator. An ultrasonic prophylaxis is a device that has a tuned needle. There's an insert that goes into a pen, and there's a harmonic generator which induces an RF frequency which vibrates the tip at a very particular frequency. It could be 25K, it could be 30, 35K. Um, there, there's a, a spectrum of frequencies. The important thing is, is it's water-cooled, usually, and then at the same time, it's it's tuned. So a waveform must propagate, and it is at an apex down here at the tip. So the length of your uh, insert and the frequency are going to determine how much the tip vibrates. And this one here, since I can't see that it has a harmonic generator, I don't see how they would have that capability. There's, there's not enough real estate inside the body. So it must be a motor-driven offset weight vibration device. That's what I'm assuming. So let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. So it comes in a neat package. It is a USB chargeable device, and it's actually very lightweight, very lightweight. I'll leave it right here so y'all can see what it's supposed to look like. So on the back of this device, you see that it's got a port down here, that's the charging port, and it looks like it's a two and a half millimeter barrel jack. And the only reason I can say that they did that is so that there's a watertight seal, because if it was a USB port and there wasn't a good seal, you would get some definite corrosion, uh, partially because the pins are so close together, but also because USB is much, much more difficult to create a watertight seal than a round seal like that, which that's the only reason I can uh, figure that out. So the charging cable is uh, USB to the what I think is a two and a half millimeter barrel jack. If somebody lost that cable, good luck finding another one. Never. So uh, functionality wise, uh, it's got a clear base, non-removable tip, as far as I can tell. I don't know. No, definitely not. Although I am going to open it up. And it's got a power button and what looks like two arrows, so that's probably the strength. So as I turn it on immediately, you know, the weird thing about um, these type of devices is you can feel the waveform as it propagates. And what it is is there's probably a little motor down here with an offset weight that vibrates. And because this uh, long dingle hopper right here, uh, is out there, it's going to vibrate the tip. And the problem is if the tip isn't at a tuned length, um, waves, they go at, like a sine, and at the apex of a sine wave is where the tip would be at its best. But if it's down near the cross point of the sine wave, when it goes from positive to negative, well, that's when it would not have very much movement and not very much power at all. So it's kind of weird because I can feel it really strong right here. Not very strong right here at all. More strong and very strong. And yeah, it's pretty strong at the tip, but I think it's more strong down here on the curve. You can actually feel that because you can feel the wave. So yeah, right here it's really strong. Nothing. Stronger, stronger, stronger. And then, I don't know, maybe it dies down a little bit. But anyway, that's on maximum power. You can turn it down, which all this do it's, it's digitally decreasing probably the uh, voltage or the pulse width to the motor. Maybe I'll do a video and we'll check that out. You see they're stepping it up, stepping it down. And when it's on low, 
Like it takes it, it. There's almost nothing to it. Hear that? With just a little, little tiny bit of pressure, it's vibrating. It's vibrating my hand pretty good, but this tip is obviously no longer vibrating because I dampened it on the box. And that's the difference between an ultrasonic prophylaxis because an ultrasonic prophylaxis, because of the way that it's tuned, if you try to hold on to an ultrasonic prophylaxis, you are going to burn your fingertips. The vibration is going to create friction in your tissue and you are not going to have a good day. I can turn this guy on high and as soon as I pinch it a little bit, hear it? you can hear the tone change because I'm changing how the wave propagates through the stalk right here. You hear that? And it takes little to no strength. See that? It's not even marking this box. Now if I release almost all the pressure, yeah, it's vibrating, but it it almost immediately dampens out. An ultrasonic prophylaxis will never dampen out like that. It takes a lot of force to, to dampen out the tip on a real ultrasonic prophylaxis. So uh, this device here, it is a gimmick, and it, it will do almost absolutely nothing. I would say one of those Philips Sonicare toothbrushes, which is probably one of my favorite toothbrushes in the world, with maybe some of that peroxide based mouthwash uh, although i'm not a doctor guys but i can tell you if you're after cavitation and to get underneath the gums and maybe to clean some extra stuff that's probably what i would do is is like a high frequency toothbrush with maybe like a peroxide based mouthwash but anyway guys um this guy here is an absolute joke and i knew that it was going to be but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what is out there in the market. All right, well, there we go. There we go. I was able to just pull it off. So here you can see a uh, very soft pop metal that goes down here and it's clearly, yeah, it's very soft. Other words, I'd say maybe this is even good for a lock pick or something, yeah. It's so wild that that's what they came up with. So the entire device is an absolute gag. Here, let me get some pliers. Let's see if I can open this bad boy up and get inside it. Because I'm more curious about how things work. All right, so there's the end cap. It's all fancy dancy. Here's a boot. It's got a silicone jacket. Come on, shut off. All right, and once we get inside the silicone jacket, now I can see the actual fasteners which hold this guy together. Wow, that's really sharp too. This right here is extremely sharp. Come on. There we go. All right, and you can see the activation buttons are just molded in uh, to the case. Okay, so let's see, let's put this guy here, 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 and where is my new driver set? Guys, I just did a video a couple days ago on these drivers. Here is one of those perfect opportunities to give it a hot supper. Okay, and this looks like a number uh, let's do pH 00, zero Phillips okay oh yeah no problems at all this is the kind of work that the screwdriver was really designed for light duty something where you can have light amounts of torque because you don't want to really booger up uh, a lot of these fasteners. Okay. Some of you guys play some bets, so I'm going to stab myself in the hand. <laughs> all right let's see what is doing all the magic on this guy all 
All right. No surprises at all. Okay, so inside this is a small uh, lithium ion battery. Probably one of the smallest batteries that you can get. Uh, directly soldered to a very simple PCB. And here is the tiny, tiny little motor. And it is inside an encasement. <laughs> so this entire dingle hopper right here is actually surrounding the motor and there is an offset weight right there you can see it so let's see if I can vibrate this guy without oh yeah so that's all it's doing is vibrating the motor which is encased in a pop metal very soft metal um, dingle hopper which goes up inside it doesn't even go up inside all that far it kind of stops at the base of this uh, stainless steel pick and that's it. It's very simple, guys. It's unfortunate that it's so simple. Here, I'm going to use its own pick to pull it out. Let's see, I got a couple fasteners. All right. Come on. There we go. All right. And we have some surface mount buttons on the other side. Very simple, very easy cheap to produce and it's funny because the most expensive component on here i think is going to be that barrel connector it, how wild is that there it is manufactured to cost and uh definitely completely different than an ultrasonic prophylaxis guys do not ever get these things it is a complete gimmick it the tip saturates as soon as you touch it which means it's it dampens out and there's there's no waveform whatsoever. It's the waveform at a certain frequency that creates the cavitation in an ultrasonic prophylaxis. And this unit here just doesn't have the power. It definitely doesn't have the frequency. And this little motor right here, it's maybe rotating at let's see. Let's say 8 to 10,000 rpm maybe with that with that offset weight see the thing is when you offset something that rotates it can no longer spin at, at you know its maximum intended uh, speed so now you're dampening the speed by putting that weight on there and so you're not even getting close to uh, the cavitation frequencies complete gag it's a waste it's a scam all right guys hope you like this is a little teardown of a uh, ultrasonic tooth cleaner and um, unfortunately it's, it's not even ultrasonic because sonic ends at what 20 kilohertz and that you know 25 kilohertz 30 35 kilohertz which is normal ultrasonic prophylaxis that is ultrasonic this one here at only 8,000 to 9,000 is not ultrasonic that is it's sonic I mean you can actually hear it vibrating at a certain frequency so it is what it is guys Thanks for watching. Hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up down below and let me know if you have any other suggestions for future content. I would love to hear what you guys think.